الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد important advice for the new muslim first and foremost congratulations on embracing your new faith which is islam and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with sincerity to him and bless us all with firmness upon the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to go forward because we face many challenges as new muslims and we are in need of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help support and assistance and remember always to call upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so amongst the important advices that i personally can offer from my personal experience is first and foremost the tawhid monotheism is to know who allah is because that's what islam is about it's about worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing who he is knowing him by his divine names and attributes uh, which are revealed in the quran which is the speech of allah it is the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and according to the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is knowing the lordship of Allah, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. He's the only one worthy of worship. All worship, all supplication. Uh, we rely strictly and trust solely and strictly on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially for those things that the creation is unable to fulfill. And all forms of worship go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thirdly, we also, we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator of the heavens and earth, and that all the worship, as we mentioned, goes to Him alone. And this is in accordance with our purpose in life, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a divine purpose. You know, it is His divine purpose. And we are to fulfill that purpose and that is to worship Him and Him alone. That's the purpose of life in a nutshell. That gives the Muslim, the believer, direction. When we go to college, when we're in the in high school when we are in our jobs and so forth we look to how those things can help strengthen us and help bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how they help fulfill that purpose how the the type of work that we do how does it help us fulfill the purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all of those things will go our job our university degree our time in the university our friends our companions everything will leave us except for the deeds that we left behind. And were we upon worshipping Allah alone, or did we associate partners with Him? So the first advice I would say is learn Tawheed. Spend your time and your energy in learning about who Allah is, reading the Quran, reading the Sunnah, and reading good books that explain Islamic monotheism accurately and very good. And from my knowledge, there are many books, there's especially explanations of the Kitab al-Tawheed from Sheikh Muhammad and Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, uh, I believe in translated in English, Sheikh bin Uthaymin also have explained the book Kitab al-Tawheed, very important for the believer to have. And you can buy it at Dar es Salaam. Also, uh, Bilal Phillips' book, Tawheed, is excellent as well especially for the beginner it really breaks down things there are some things to be uh, aware of in the book but however in general it is very good and many of us learned from that book learned about what Islamic monotheism is so it's a very excellent book in, in general it breaks it down and it's very good for the beginner to really understand some of the important issues related to Islamic monotheism that is, should be a priority for every believer to know and understand, especially the new Muslim. The second thing that I can offer as advice, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, is that oh, adhering strongly to your prayer. Never give up your salat. Understand you came to Islam to come closer to your Lord, to find direction. 
always establish the prayer. I don't care what happens. Many of us, we grew in our Islam and we became Muslim. What kept me Muslim after all the trials and different challenges you find? Because in our, when we became Muslim, there wasn't much knowledge, Islamic knowledge spread around, especially accurate Islamic knowledge. There wasn't much from where I'm from. From where I'm from, we didn't have really people sitting down and teaching us Islam. Instead, they taught us other bid'ah, you know, things that go against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet but they never sat down and say, hey, this is what Tawheed is. Let's read this book. Let's study together. No, we didn't have that. We didn't have the internet back then. We didn't have, you know, those those different sources of information. So, learning Tawheed and keeping your prayer, because your prayer, your Salat, is your relationship between you and Allah. And no one can interrupt that. So knowing how to properly pray, knowing how to purify yourself, may ghusl and 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 tahara and wudu and these things, you know, how to how to properly wash yourself for prayer is a priority as well. Learn that. Learn the supplications to say. Learn how to read Surah Al Fatiha properly. Learn uh, and and how to establish a prayer. And most importantly, know that Allah is going to reward you by your intention. The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone will get that for which he intended. So if you intend good, you're going to get good. As long as you're striving to uh, learn, and learn the truth and better your Islam and practice the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So in order to maintain your Islam and your Iman, is keeping your prayer. Pray the prayer on time. Pray the prayer. Learn more about the prayer. How to perfect your prayer. And realize that, hey, through all the rough times, if you have difficulties, especially when we're younger, we're challenged with different things, different challenges uh, in school, different peer pressures, keep your prayer. Your prayer is your relationship with Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make all of your affairs easy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whom He pleases. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the trustworthy stronghold, is your prayer. That's the sila, bain al-abd wa rabbi. That is the relationship between the slave and his lord. And it's the most important relationship you can have, that you can always rely on Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, That when you rely or seek help, and assistance. Seek it from Allah. So first and foremost, whenever you're going through different challenges, go to Allah first. Make wudu, pray rakatain, two units of prayer, and and, 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 and and then seek advice from your friends and family or your Muslim brothers and sisters. Hopefully, hopefully that includes uh, friends and family, and if not, at least from your Muslim brothers and sisters to gain that Islamic wisdom. So always establish your prayer. Keep your prayer. And the final thing that I can say, which is very important, is be careful of just taking anything as sources of knowledge. Don't just grab from here and cut and paste from the internet and from this book and from this. You need to know and stick with sound, authentic Islamic sources because there are so many things out there to distract you. You have the Shia. You have the Rafida. You have other people who they br bring you things which look good in the cloak of Islam, but they'll try to mislead you. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us this. He said that there would be du'at ala abwab of jahannam, that there would be callers on the bab of the hellfire, meaning there's going to be all kind of groups and sects and parties who want you to come and join them, be with us, uh, call to us. Strengthen us. Give your money to us. Sacrifice with us. But you want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you, you need to be able to have those tools to distinguish between truth and falsehood. And that only comes through Islamic knowledge, through sound Islamic knowledge, through sound tawheed. So strive your best to, to, divert, to devote some time in your life. Whether it be 10 minutes, everyone should be able to, even the surgeon that's busy with operation after operation, should possibly be able to devote 10 minutes of study time. So what about us? Many of us, we have so much time on our hands. Take 10 minutes of your day, read some beneficial knowledge 
from Bukhari and Muslim and from the Quran and from books that help to explain those sources because we don't want to come up with our own opinions we want to go with the sources and what the scholars of Islam that have held that Allah has blessed to be the ones who held this religion and made it uh, so that we could have it in its pure form starting with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in may Allah be pleased with them all and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with good and forgive us of evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam